good afternoon everyone and thanks uh, to professor chatterji uh, for introducing me and really it's my pleasure it's my honor to have a chance to speak something in this uh, dst sponsored uh, entrepreneurship development program on faculty development organized by adamas university uh, so again uh, i welcome you all on the behalf of the adamas university uh, i welcome you all so i have joined in adamas university very recently and so again uh, it's a after uh, afternoon session suppose lunch session and you know uh, for any speaker uh, in, in, in the post lunch session it's very difficult because we had we already had our uh, lunch anyway so that's why i am not going to discuss uh, i am not going to uh, say something on on that entrepreneurship because in last four days uh, we have learned a lot from our previous speakers so they have all they all have uh, enlightened the fact the entrepreneurship development and how we can actually uh, encourage uh, uh, other uh, students uh, being a faculty that they should have uh, this this concept in their mind that okay it's not that so they can always be a entrepreneur anyway so before i start uh, let me share my screen with all of you um uh, uh so uh, is it visible the the slide that i have shared okay okay thank you thank you thank you so before i start uh, of uh, discussing uh, the fact of uh, one eminent uh, person and as this is an uh, entrepreneurship development program in india so it should be injustice in Uh, mention the name of this person yeah. in Indian context. So before I start discussing uh, something on that that eminent person, uh, I would like to share uh, three images. So one, uh, a world class research and academic institution, which is in uh, Bangalore, uh, Indian Institute of Science. second one uh, the taj mahal hotel so we uh, no, no it is known to us that taj palace which is in uh, bombay or mumbai and third one it is also in mumbai uh, elephants and stock college so with these three images so can i ask you all that who i would like to connect or i would like to relate with this three organization one is uh, the world class academic institute research institute one is basically a world class uh, hotel and another one is uh, a very eminent uh, uh, college in india so the one person who is actually linked with this three and from uh, from his vision so we have got three, this three world class uh organization or rather i say institution so can anyone uh have any idea that to whom i would like to relate i think it's jamshed ji tata iisc bangalore the taj palace hotel and elphinstone college in mumbai i think you were trying to relate uh, jamshed ji tata yeah absolutely so he is that man uh so this man i guess uh, he doesn't need any formal introduction yeah so a pioneer uh, a visionary 
perhaps these adjectives are not enough to describe a man of such extraordinary caliber and just a stature who has secured a strong foothold in this map of industrialized nation of the world. Movie. Okay. So Jamshed Ji Tata, Jamshed Ji Nusra was just, just an entrepreneur who helped India take her place in the League of Industrialized Nations. He was a patriot and a humanist whose ideal and vision shaped and business conglomerate. So for any person uh, who has this uh, vision to change something, to change the world uh, uh, in his or her own way. So uh, nothing of Jamshedji's style who suggested that create uh, this uh, own destiny. So born on July No, it's fine. Yeah, it's not uh, something it, it's not working properly. Yeah, it's fine. No, no, it's done. Okay, and in the city town of Navsari, which is in Gujarat right now, so he was the first child of the son of Nusarbanji Tata, the child of family of a Parsi's priest. Now, raised in uh, Navsari, Jamshedji joined his father in Bombay when he was 14, at his very old age. So, Nusaraji, his father, got him enrolled in the college uh, at that time. It was very, very uh, prominent college or very uh, important organization during that uh, dependent period. So, Elphinstone College, from where he actually passed. Uh, as a dream scholar, which is also known as, uh, which is equivalent to today's the graduate degree program. So in 1868, only at age of 29, so this is very important that, so many people who become uh, uh, the name that usually appears in, uh, or we actually used to uh, take uh, the names of uh, some visionaries. So they all have started thinking in out of the box so at the very uh, early age, and he, during that time, experience generated nine years working with his father. So he had the experience. And then, then he had something in his mind. So Jamushetji started a trading company with a, cap with a very small capital during that time. It was that the bottle mill uh, that had been uh, developed during that time. So Jamushetji straight up his foot into this industry in 1870. Now he, cho he chose this Nagpur for setting up for this cotton mill instead of Mumbai. Because there were certain reasons to choose Nagpur within the Maharashtra from, uh, than the Mumbai. So perhaps this has been the most significant of all times of Jamshedji's life. As far as the Actually, uh, during that time, he not only thought about to develop or to increase business, rather he had in his mind that not all about the business, rather uh, he wanted to develop uh, the new generation to have something in their mind so they can always uh, be a kind of that person who can become the entrepreneur in their later phase of life. So from 1880 till his death in death is 1904, his entire being had concentrated solely on the three missions of his life. The so first one is basically setting up an iron and steel company. And present day, we all know that this is a name as Tata Steel. So formerly it was known as the T Steel. Second one. He always had a, a, a 
the zeal, passion to generate the hydroelectric power station. And the next phase, we all know that it is named as Tata Power. And the third one, not only in the steel and this power generation strategy, we always wanted to create a world-class educational institute. So you know what? Education is something that uh, is important, that is essential uh, for uh, a life of a person. Now, then for with this next venture that he did uh, bear fruit while Jamshedji was alive, that I was just talking about in the first uh, uh, the slide that starting from uh, the cotton mill, then uh, switch to the uh, steel company, then uh, the Tata Powers, then uh, the hot, world-class hotel, then a world-class academic research institute like IISC. So, so, so this is something that, uh, that made uh, he's always alive in our mind also. Now, during that time uh, in the dependent India, so Taj Mahal Hotel, uh, presently it is known as the Taj Palace. So that had to be in the rank one. So during that time, Jamshed just had his mind on building up, building it after uh, being denied entry into the city hotel, being an Indian. So this is very important that initially he was not allowed to enter a class, a, a world class hotel during that time. So it actually, he took it very seriously. Now he thought about that, okay, I have to build something at a world class level. So parallelly that can uh, be open for, for the many people. The important fact is that what he did during that time, uh, what he actually proposed to do, the soap in the luxury, it was the first building in the Bumba or uh, the Bombay earlier to use electricity and the first hotel in the country to have the American fans, German elevators, Turkish baths, English butler, and whole lot of other innovative delights. So, so the question is that why I chose, uh, when I wanted to talk, uh, I'm not going into the four details, much more details of Tata because Documents regarding the application. But just I that, so if I don't name the person like him, so it, would, it, it would be incomplete for an accession of the document. This is all about him, and uh, he actually uh, all us uh, proud. Uh, ऑलरेडी इंडियन in uh, beverage industry, uh, like uh, we all know that Tetley is uh, uh, the second largest selling uh, tea bag company, or uh, that is also a group of, what uh, group of Tata group. So now has become the second, second largest, second largest uh, tea company in global, global world. Anyway, so with, with this uh, note, uh, I would like to finish uh, discussing of this person, Jamshed Ji Tata. So, uh, to extend my uh, discussion today, so uh, I have kept, uh, so I have thought of discussing uh, another person. So, yesterday, Professor Mitro discussed uh, uh, many quotes of uh, many eminent, many entrepreneurs. 
but uh, as i'm being a field of a biology so i belong to the group of uh, microbiology or biotechnology so i would like to mention uh, i would definitely like to mention the name of this person uh, we all know this person and uh, this is very well he, she is very well known face in indian and global context not none other than the kiran majumdar shah so even uh, in 1953 she was born uh, the kiran majumdar shah and now he is basically the chairman and the an md of the biocon limited and which is now the indian largest listed biotechnology company based on bangalore we all know and and also a present chairperson of iim bangalore now biocon this is very important i think many of you already know about this fact that biocon is basically the first company why i am actually interested in saying uh, 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 another uh, telling the fact of another person uh, with this indian context because in many times we talk about many people uh, uh, from abroad but but truly truly speaking so india is rich of all sort of caliber so during uh, several decades back several years back several hundred years so india have evolved many people have evolved and many people actually they prove themselves that they are quite parallel in in respect to the other people world anyway so biocon is the first company worldwide to develop the recombinant human insulin on a particular air expression system and today this insulin is the largest genetic insulin brand in india this is a remarkable thing they have actually achieved now apart from being widely recognized as one of the most influential business leader in the field of biotechnology he is also one of the first self made woman billionaire so this is another uh, uh, extraordinary fact it's not anything that she made uh, all us proud now according to the uh, forbes list so she is uh, 68 uh, so according to the list among all the other uh, women there so she has been ranked 68 in the power women 2020 ranking 27th rank of indian riches in 2020 and finally he has been the 804 the billionaire in 2020 rank on the basis of the forbes list and within this few years so the total number of employee in the biocon company is over 11000 so that means so we should not always think that okay so that person abroad he has done something great definitely they all have done something great in their life but the india we need to focus because this is our the place we took birth so so there is a never ending list of, of many people who uh, to birth in india and they prove themselves and they actually uh, have a full hold in in their own field so anyway so with this note uh, uh i would like to close uh, a today's very brief session and i don't take much of your time today uh, but before i close so i would like to just share one small video of 6 7 minutes so i thought that instead of discussing something in the computer i hope a small video that i have taken from a particular source so i'd like to just play the video for you just please watch this video screen jamshed ji nasarwan ji tata a visionary and a patriot more than a century ago jamshed ji nasarwan ji tata laid the foundations of a business that now spreads across seven business sectors 80 countries six continents and touches the lives of millions inspired by his desire 
to see India as one of the world's advanced nations. He conceived of institutions and policies far in advance of his times. Jamsedji was born on March 3rd, 1839 to Nasirvanji and Jeevanbhai Tata in Navsari, Gujarat, an intellectual and cultural center for Parsis. His father was the first businessman in a family of priests. At the age of 14, Jamsedji left Navsari to live with his father in Bombay. He studied at the Elphinstone College, one of the foremost institutions of that time, and in time he passed out as a green scholar. While still a student, Jamshedji married Hirabai Tabu and became the father of two sons, Dorab and Ratan. After graduation and a brief apprenticeship at a solicitor's office, he joined his father's firm, Nasirvanji and Kalyandas General Merchants. In the nine years he worked with his father, he learned about commodities, markets, trading and banking. Jamshedji started his own trading company, Tata and Sons, the precursor of Tata Sons in 1868 at the age of 29. The capital invested was Rs 21,000. He ventured into textiles after making a detailed study of the Lancashire cotton trade in order to replicate that success story in his own country. In 1874, Jamsedji floated the Central India Spinning, Weaving and Manufacturing Company with a seed capital of Rs 150,000. He went against prevailing wisdom and based the company in Nagpur, the heart of Maharashtra's cotton country, rather than Bombay or Ahmedabad. On January 1st, 1877, the day Queen Victoria was proclaimed Empress of India, the Empress Mills came into existence. Empress Mills introduced many innovative products and processes. Jamsedji went against established conventions and set up a board of directors, with Nasirvanji as chairman and himself as the managing director. He introduced ring spindles instead of mule and induced the manufacturers to refine them to give 12,000 revolutions instead of 6,000. Jamsedji pioneered several welfare schemes for workers at Empress Mills. Shorter working hours, well-ventilated workplaces, recreation facilities, creches, sanitary living quarters, filtered water, and a dispensary for treating minor ailments. He launched Provident Fund, gratuity, and accident compensation schemes for workers long before they became statutory in the West. In 1867, on a visit to check out new machinery at Manchester, he attended a lecture by Thomas Carlyle, English philosopher and author, and was much struck by his statement that the nation that has the steel will have the gold. Driven by his dream of seeing India among the League of Industrialized Nations, Jamshedji decided to build a world-class steel plant in the country. The British government was skeptical and reluctant to extend support to Jamshedji's venture. Sir Frederick Upcott, the chief commissioner of the Great Indian Peninsula Railway, scornfully promised to eat every pound of steel rail the Tatars succeed in making. Jamshedji was unfazed. He started diligently collecting information on minerals in India. At his request, Charles Perrin, the foremost geologist in America, came to India to prospect for the best site. He said he was compelled to do so by the character, force and kindliness radiating from Jamshedji's face. Jamshedji went to America to study the technology being used by the steel plants. He saw the poor conditions American workers lived in and was determined this would not happen at the steel plant he set up. He described his concept of a township for steel workers in a letter to his son Dorab five years before a site for the steel plant had been finalized. 
be sure to lay wide streets planted with shady trees, every other of a quick growing variety. Be sure that there is plenty of space for lawns and gardens. Reserve large areas for football, hockey and parks. Earmark areas for Hindu temples, Mohammedan mosques and Christian churches. The poverty of his countrymen deeply affected Jumsetji, but he was not an advocate of what he called patchwork philanthropy, which only benefits the recipient. He believed that what advances a nation or a community is to lift up the best and the most gifted so as to make them of the greatest service to the country. It was in this spirit of encouraging the best that Jamsetji established the J.N. Tata Endowment in 1892 to enable Indian students, regardless of caste or creed, to pursue higher studies in England. This flowered into the Tata Scholarships. Jamsetji's vision for India did not stop at a steel plant. Bombay had over 100 textile mills polluting the city with coal-fired boilers. He wanted to replace them with a clean source of energy, hydroelectric power. His ambitious plan envisaged the creation of a reservoir between the hills of the Western Ghats and an artificial waterfall that would turn turbines to produce electricity. Also on Jamsetji's agenda was the setting up of an institution of scientific learning and research to develop India's technical resources. Jamsetji pledged rupees 3 million, a third of his personal fortune, to this institute, but he was firm it would not carry his name. He wanted it to be a national institution with a national name the Indian Institute of Science, so that individual benefactors would be at ease contributing funds. Jamsetji did not live to see either the Indian Institute of Science or the Tata Hydroelectric Power Supply Company or Tata Steel set up. Only one of the ventures he worked so hard for saw the light of day in his lifetime, the Taj Mahal Hotel. Built 21 years before the Gateway of India, it was Jamsetji's gift to Bombay, a luxury hotel that even now stands apart from its peers. Legend has it that he set his mind on building it after being denied entry into one of the city's hotels because he was an Indian. The Taj Mahal Hotel has a list of firsts to its credit. It was the first building in Bombay to use electricity and the first hotel in the country to have American fans, German elevators, Turkish baths and English butlers. The 10 spun steel pillars that Jamsetji personally selected at a Paris exhibition still hold up the ceiling of the hotel. The fate that Jamsetji reposed in his people motivated them to fulfill his dreams long after his death in 1904. His extraordinary vision was given concrete form by his two sons, Dorab and Ratan. Under Dorabji's chairmanship, the first ingot of steel rolled out of the steel plant's production line in 1912, eight years after Jamsetji's death. The Indian Institute of Science started functioning in Bangalore in 1911. The Valvan Dam started production of hydroelectric power in 1915. Over the years, the Tata Group has grown and evolved, staying contemporary and at the forefront of India's industrial needs. What has not changed is the underlying Tata philosophy of constantly remaining true to the needs of the nation and society. Jamsetji's innovative zeal, philanthropic spirit and values form the bedrock of the Tata Group. The rich legacy that he left behind continues to guide the Tata Group's journey to this day. In a free enterprise, the community is not just another stakeholder in business, but is in fact the very purpose of its existence. Jim
Shanti Tata, visionary, philanthropist, founder of the Tata Group. So I hope you all uh, love the story of him and truly an inspiring story. And so that's why I wanted to share with all of you so many uh, uh, known or unknown facts. So with this note, uh, I would like to come to uh, the, uh, the, of my talk or my discussion. Um, uh, so now the uh, platform is uh, is open for discussion. So if you'd like to uh, know something, uh, or if you'd like to have any discussion, any uh, question to ask. Thank you, Dr. Majumdar, for the delivery. So, as always, now I would like the platform to be open to discussion. Today, we planned a very short session uh, because we have some announcements to be made. And I hope you all of you received the uh, questionnaire yesterday. Please uh, note a few of the things that, that I would uh, like everyone to take a note of that every day you have to fill the feedback or daily take home message report. Hello, sir. Those will be just five points to be included from the session you uh, had a discussion or heard on that day. And the second one is a uh, quiz which was having, a, a, I hope, 14 questions. And then there was some question of your name, email ID and all. So those will be given periodically. We have another assignment that will be provided to you, which will enrich you in terms of entrepreneurial activities that will be given tomorrow. Again, tomorrow we are having two sessions and those will not be a very elaborated session keeping into mind that tomorrow is a Saturday. Uh, Hello, so, sir. Uh, we'll have a one, one and a half hour session, uh, less than one and a half hour session in both the half. So Hello, uh, if I can get some feedback from you people, it would be great. Uh, Dr. Haldar has raised her hand. Yes, sir. sir I have not received any feedback questions sir, from in my mail. In yesterday you didn't also, receive I... question? Uh, just, no, just give me I, I have not received any questions. Any questionnaires in my mail. I have not received yet. Madam, please check whether uh, I have sub I have put it in the chat box. I have put it in the chat box. Just give me a minute. I will share uh, both the links again. Yes, yeah, Sakthar Yes, Sakthar Ah, Sakthar Yes, sir. Hello? Please, yes, sir. Ah, yes, actually, the, 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 you know, that the, the link which you are today, you are providing in the chat box, the same link you provided yesterday in the, in our WhatsApp group, right? Yeah. 
uh, as same same thing that means the this feedback form already shared yesterday and the same things is shared today see i will tell you uh, yes. feedback form will be same form will be sent every day okay but once you okay. response it will be recorded as that day you have respond and that will be considered as an attendance See, I am not very much uh, strict about attendance because to me, uh, what right. you learned or how you interacted carries yes, more yes. weightage. But since yes. this is a, a DST funded event and based on the SOP, I have to collect a session wise attendance. Uh, that is why uh, we have to provide some uh, way because I have been receiving calls that I have not received uh, the link and all. Uh, so what I made sure that I will post everything live. So if you are in the session, you will get the link. If you are off the session, if I mail, then all 100 participants will uh, get the mail, which I don't want. So this session feedback and everything would be people who are attending the sessions. Maybe I understand based on our schedule, uh, a couple or uh, one or two sessions may be missed. So that's why I'm keeping the, I'm trying to put the link in every session. So even in one day, there are two or three sessions. If you are present in one session or two also, you will get the link and you can submit your feedback for the day. And the same link, if you do it the next day, again, you, you have accepted the multiple response. So even if you uh, submit the next day, that means you are present on yesterday and also today. Okay. Uh, so I, suppose, uh, I have not received the form of uh, 9th February and 8th February also. Is 